It's a particularly freezing Sunday morning in London. Inside a club off Leicester Square, the Wolfmen are preparing to film the video for their third single, Cecilia. And there are not one, but two camera crews on the day, as the Wolfmen and director Paul Hill's team are joined by a production crew from UK reality TV programme, Britain's Next Top Model. They've brought along seven young wannabe models to appear in the video as the latest in their weekly challenges. The video tells the tale of a girl's induction into a bizarre fetish club, but the real drama ends up behind the scenes as two worlds collide. This is the uncensored making of Cecilia. I came up with an idea of a sort of um, lesbian fetish club with a kind of weird cabaret event and um, the lead singer Chris bringing a young ingenue, one of the seven girls, into this world and her world is changed forever. We got the guys from Rossi Workshops in uh, Manchester to uh, bring down all their kind of uh, torture implements. We had the stocks and the A-frames and the X-frames and the Y-frames and the Z-frames, we had everything. You know, we had racks and things to suspend people with. It was a total cornucopia. Ah, God, you could have a lot of fun on that equipment. As Paul Hill's team are dressing the set, the girls and production crew from Britain's Next Top Model arrive. They had me introduce the, the girls, really what their task was, because that's what they get every week, a task. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna make a rock video. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> well, the production company were, you know, naive is maybe the word. When they read the treatment and they said there was a lion tamer using his whip work, I don't know if they expected that he'd be using it on lions, if they expected a lion to come through the door, or um, if they actually understood what a, what a man with a whip might do in a fetish club. I think the production company were quite inexperienced who were doing it, and I think they got hysterical, and you know, hysterics tend to travel, and everyone got hysterical. When they saw the whole scenery, the whole dungeon set up, and we had some professional, this professional bullwhip guy called Alex. See, that didn't hurt a bit. I never felt a thing. <laughs> this guy, Alex Jacobs, is like le premier whip master in Europe. And um, I actually wanted him to bring a 13 foot bull whip. I think he only bought a 10 and a half foot one. Basically, there were a load of people from that scene who were entertaining themselves in the break, so they weren't bored, so they were whipping each other and putting candle wax on each other and tying each other up and doing all sorts of stuff. None of it was that offensive. But um, the production company, um, they were, you know, they were a little bit paranoid when they saw, you know, different, different girls getting whipped. And at that point, they was going to pull the show. I think that there was a lot of panic set in. And as I said, you know, just everyone sort of calmed down and you know, blah, blah, blah. And at that point, the professional dominatrix, she walked in the door just as I was talking to the producers and she said, do you want me to put my strap on? on? So I said, look, you know, just keep your strap on in your bag for now, sort of thing. The strap on is, is, is quite a big sort of visual thing. And I, I wasn't sure how, how far they were going in the video. I mean, I wouldn't have used it on the video, but um, it's, it's quite a, a, an outrageous thing to have. And I just wondered if it was something that might add to the fun of it. But um, I guess for what we call vanilla people, it was a little bit, maybe a little bit too far. Hey ho. And so the producers sort of, you know, just freaked a little bit more. Um, so then I got Mike, the manager, on the phone to speak to them. I got our lawyer on the phone to speak to them, uh, trying to calm the whole thing down. I really felt a lot of sympathy for Paul Hills, the direct, our director, because, you know, he had nothing to shoot for ages. I got nothing, I got nothing to shoot, I got nothing. I might as well shoot the movies. I might as well shoot my own And then at this point, Daniel, uh, the woodsman, uh, burst through the door dressed in cling film. Who is 
See, what happened is we, we, we decided we'd get a load of sort of crazy people in this video. So we put out the APB for crazies, okay? Come in, crazies, we need you. He just got the, 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 the order by Paul to come. Paul, yeah, yeah, Paul has strange powers over him. First thing I know was people were like screaming hysterically. And I look up and there's this blanket over a load of cling film carrying like bits of wood and going mm -hmm. apparently he just busted in past the girl on the door the production coordinator out of her depth already thought it was a suicide bomber then uh, the first ad started crying um they were all the girls rushed out and putting into a mini bus someone else thought it was a homeless person had gone mad they were on the phone to their executive producers that they were going to pull the shoot. You know, it was all going off and then they were going to call the police. He is completely against scaring people. He wasn't that scary, really, was he? He does not want to scare people because that is not in his thing. A dog can't help to bark. I mean, Paul can't help to be the bearded man. Right? This little cuddly little bearded boy. I didn't know who it was, but I thought it must be Daniel. I assumed it was Daniel. So I started shooting on the guy, okay, going down the stairs. He still didn't say a word. I've heard a lot of people were shocked about his facial disfigurations. People ask me about how that came about. I can only say one thing, through lying. Lies will eventually disfigure you. <laughs> Woodsman! 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 The guy couldn't walk properly, you know, he was falling over, tottering. I was trying to push the fucker into shot. Just trying to get him into shot and he kept on falling out of shot, pushing him into shot. There he is, there he is, get him! Get him! Hey, there, there, in on that, in on that, that's the shot, there we are. We're there, we're there, we're there. That's great, that's genius! Genius, genius, genius. He was so confused and out of his place, like, and I guess those emotions hardened that they came out of stones. Stones came out of his mouth. The woodman actually endearingly calls Paul his little bear. What? He thought Paul is taking him for a romantic bearded fun. I don't know what bearded fun is. I have no experience of bearded fun. Getting the woodman out from the wood just can't be played around with like that. It's absolutely insanity. It's insanity. This is. Every time I work with Chris, every time I work with Chris, it just goes out of control. I met Daniel through Jackie on Acid, which was uh, Chris's previous uh, band. You know, he rubs people up the wrong way and he enjoys it. Madness, that's the only time he's out bizarre everyone. I think in the end, I managed to calm him down. I think it was one of my biggest sort of diplomatic moves <laughs> I've ever had to do in my life. It was a nightmare, to be honest with you, but it was great to get through it. And then, you know, everything started to work fine and we, st we got on with the shoot.